Worship for Sunday, March the 21st, 2021, the fifth Sunday in Lent, and International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. God promises Jeremiah that a new covenant will be made in the future, a covenant that will allow all people to know God by heart. The Church sees this promise fulfilled in Christ, who draws all people to himself when he is lifted up on the cross. Our baptismal covenant draws us to God's heart through Christ, and draws God's love and truth into our hearts. We join together in worship, sharing in word, song, and meal, and leave strengthened to share God's inclusive love with all the world. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be strengthened by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. Holy Week begins one week from today. Special worship services for Palm Passion Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday will be recorded in the sanctuary and posted as usual to YouTube. For Easter Sunday, you may wish to prepare the elements such as bread and wine for communion at home. For Monday, Thursday, April the 1st, we will gather by Zoom at 7 p.m. for a devotion and conversation. I hope to see you there. Details will follow soon. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for playing a prelude and postlude for us today. And thank you to her mother, Karen Peters, for recording Katrina's music. Thank you also to our reader for today, Josh Hyde. In these challenging and unforeseeable times, if you find that you need someone to talk to or if you need any assistance, please email me or phone me at the church office and I will help you. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, ever creating, ever transforming, ever enlivening, source of love and liberation, our heart and our home. Amen. In Jesus, we have met the one who with his very life showed us the power of love to transform the lives of all who are vulnerable. 
We confess the ways in which we steadfastly cling to our rights and entitlements, refusing to be changed or even touched by the world's pain. Transforming Christ. Move us from comfort to courage, from empathy to engagement, from prayer to policy change. Enlivening Spirit, breathe into us the breath of your grace, that we may release our hold on the fear and arrogance that keep us from knowing wholeness. Because we have met Jesus, we are ever being transformed. We are ever being enlivened with the Spirit's power, the grace of God, in whom we live and move and have our being. Forgiveness, grace, and love are yours to have and yours to share, now and always. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you have written the law of love on the hearts of your people. Led by the Holy Spirit, may we treasure the law of love as Christ before us treasured it, living lives of trusting and loving obedience to you. Knowing that one day we will be part of the harvest of salvation, where everyone will be gathered to discover the goodness and fullness of life in your kingdom of peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children's Time. Racism. I'm so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. I wonder how many of you have heard the word racism. Racism is treating people differently based on the color of their skin and racism is wrong. Here's a video clip from one of my favorite cartoon characters that explains more. And now, a message from Arthur. I gotta call Buster. Hey, Arthur. Hey, Buster. Did you see that video? Yeah, I just watched it. It was awful. I can't believe someone would be hurt like that just because they're black. Racism is so unfair. No one should ever judge someone by the color of their skin. But how could it happen here, in Elwood City, right outside the Sugar Bowl? Buster, it happens everywhere. I was talking to Mrs. McGrady the other day. She said there's a really long history of black people not being treated fairly in this country. It has to stop. We have to do something. Yeah! But what can we do? I mean, I'm eight. I can't even fry an egg on my own. I don't know. <gasps> Maybe Mrs. McGrady can give us some ideas. Hold on. Hello, boys. I'm so glad you reached out to me. Yes, I saw the video too. And let me tell you, it made my blood boil. Me too. It also made me scared. I mean, this happened in our neighborhood. It is scary, Buster. But you should know that a lot of grown-ups are fighting racism and working hard to keep us all safe. Why does this keep happening, Mrs. McGrady? Well, racism is like a disease. If you don't treat it, it's just going to get worse. Wait, if racism is a disease, can I get it? Buster, don't worry. This isn't about you. Actually, it is. It's about all of us. It's not enough to just say, I'm not racist. It's not my problem. We have to actively fight against racism. As my friend John Lewis once said, if you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation to do something about it. So what can we do? Well, one of the most important things is what you're doing right now. Eating carrot sticks? <laughs> I mean, talking about it. Talk about racism with your friends, your parents, your teachers. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We all have a lot to learn about this issue. Also, listen. Listen to people who have experienced racism firsthand. Imagine what it would be like if it happened to you or someone you love. 
And finally, act. When you see or hear of someone being treated unfairly, stand up for them. Say something. It might be scary, but I guarantee you it's better for everyone, and it's the right thing to do. Wow! You really inspired me! Yeah, thank you, Mrs. McGrady. I'm going to talk with my parents about this right now! Hey, Mom! Me too! Bye! Whoa! That's it? I was just getting going! Remember, kids, talk, listen, and act. If we work together, we can make a difference. And eat those carrots, too. <laughs>
whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. The Sermon. Some Greeks. This past week's shooting rampage that unfolded at three Atlanta-area massage parlors on Tuesday left eight families mourning their loved ones and fanned fears in the Asian-American community of racially motivated violence, reports the CBC. And a repeat report that will be released tomorrow states that the RCMP acted in a racist, discriminatory manner when it notified a Cree mother her son had been killed. Today is the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. It began in 1960, when police in South Africa opened fire and killed 69 people at a peaceful demonstration against apartheid, explains a letter this week from Anglican and Lutheran bishops in Canada and the United States. So, when I began thinking about today's appointed readings, the phrase, some Greeks, stood out for me. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Jesus and his disciples are in Jerusalem when the, those Gentiles who were interested in Judaism approach Philip to inquire about having an audience with Jesus. They may have approached Philip because he had a Greek rather than a Jewish name. Philip goes to consult with Andrew, the only other disciple with a Greek rather than Jewish name. Did Philip join forces with Andrew because he wasn't sure how Jesus would respond to these foreigners? Up until this point, Jesus had almost completely limited his ministry to Israel, to Jews. So, some Greeks, non-Jewish Gentiles, interested in Judaism, ask Philip to take them to see Jesus. Philip joins with Andrew, and together they make the request of Jesus. But the answer that Jesus gives them seems to say nothing about the request of the Greeks. Jesus totally ignores them and doesn't even seem to acknowledge them. Instead of saying, how wonderful, bring them here and I'll talk to them, Jesus goes off on a meditative comment about seeds and plants, about life and death, about servants and masters. Why? What is he saying? The fullest answer to that question comes in verse 32. At that point, Jesus declares that when he is lifted up from the earth, he will draw all people to himself. The fact that Gentiles want to see Jesus helps Jesus to recognize that the crucial moment has finally arrived. The arrival of the Greeks, notes one commentator, points to the fulfillment of God's promises of universal salvation, and so marks the beginning of a new age. When I am lifted up from the earth, promises Jesus, I will draw all people to myself. When Jesus was born, he was visited by foreigners from the East to show that God's love is for all. And now Jesus is reminded of this by this visit of foreigners at the end of his life. This time they come from the West. In today's gospel reading, some Greeks wish to see Jesus. 
and the very presence of these foreigners helps Jesus to realize that his hour has come. The time is at hand for Jesus to draw all to himself. What a crucial role at a crucial time these foreigners had. And that, I think, points to the reason we want to include so-called foreigners. It's because we need their contributions, their special gifts. We need them. Now, back to today being the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. This time of pandemic has revealed to us the inequalities of life in Canada. Sadly, perhaps emboldened by the racism of the former U.S. president, who referred to COVID-19 as the Chinese flu, Kung flu, and other derogatory statements. Sadly, acts of racism have been on the increase during this time of pandemic, especially toward those of Asian descent. And sadly, lest you think that racism is just a made in the United States problem, here's a shocking truth. Canada has a higher per capita incident of reports of anti-Asian racism than the states. Let that sink in. I was shocked to hear it. It was an eye-opener. Canada has a higher per capita incident of reports of anti-Asian racism than the states. And here's what we're learning about the emerging trends. Racism occurs most often outside, in public, and mostly against women. It almost always involves verbal harassment, and a fifth of the time also includes assault. So what can we do to combat racism? Here are some suggestions from UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, about what we can all do. Many of us like to think of racism as something from the past, something that no longer holds sway over our societies, something that no longer exists. But World War II took place less than a century ago. Survivors of the Holocaust are still alive today. The Jim Crow's laws were enforced until 1965. L'apartheid a été une réalité jusqu'en 1991. We live in a world where people face barriers to education, employment, health, justice, and culture just because of the color of their skin. When people are discriminated against, excluded, stigmatized, attacked, or even murdered. Just because of where they come from, what they look like, or what they believe in. No more. No more. No more. Hoy decimos, basta. El racismo y la discriminación son causados por la ignorancia y el miedo a lo que creemos diferente. But this doesn't have to be the case. You, me, us, we can create the change that we want. By defending quality education for all, we can combat the root causes of deadly stereotypes and prejudices. By developing historical knowledge and critical thinking, we can improve our understanding of the past. By encouraging cultural diversity, especially at the local level, we can build societies that are more respectful of others. By empowering the younger generation, we can help them shape the world to come. So, stop watching from the side. Read, observe, learn, and listen. We must hold ourselves accountable. We must hold our societies accountable. We are all one humanity. Keep quiet is not an option. Is not an option. Di lo que piensas. Speak up. Speak up. Take action. Take action. Take action.
the Racial Justice Advisory Committee of our Eastern Synod tells us that to stay silent enables racism and injustice to continue. Furthermore, when we fail to speak out against acts of racism, we become silent perpetrators of injustice. In short, if we do not condemn racism, then we are guilty of it. It is our work, particularly as a community of faith, to speak out against acts of racism. It is our work to say loudly and clearly that we do not accept this reality. We must call out racism as sinful and deadly. And that is only the beginning. For once we speak out against it, then we must do the work of dismantling the systems that oppress. We need that new heart, which God promised us so long ago through the prophet Jeremiah in today's first reading. In today's gospel reading, some Greeks wish to see Jesus. And the very presence of these foreigners helps Jesus to realize that his hour has come. The time is at hand for Jesus to draw all to himself. What a crucial role at a crucial time those foreigners had. And that points to the reason we want to include so-called foreigners, because we need their contributions, their special gifts. We need them. I'll close with a prayer commended to us in that letter this past week from Anglican and Lutheran bishops in Canada and the United States. Let us pray. God of holy ground, move us to lament and repent. Open our hearts, bodies, minds, and souls to the cries of your people. Transform us by your presence. Drive us into action for the dismantling of racism in relationships, communities, and societies. Bless us with companions who support us, challenge us, and help us to keep going. We pray for the elimination of racial discrimination. In the name of Jesus. Amen. on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your love is great. You empower us to live lives that reflect your great love. Make your church a community of love throughout the world. Give your people courage to love. 
Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of truth-telling and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. You fill the earth with your presence, from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Move us to combat climate change and push us to care for the poor hurt by our lifestyle. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You promise to write your law in our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Erase racism, prejudice, and hatred. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who long to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unlovable, those who are dying and all who grieve, those who need healing of mind or body, including all whom we name before you. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You call us to follow Jesus in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus in his modeling of inclusion. Hear us, O God, your love is great. In Christ lifted up, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us glimpses of that glory. With all those who have died, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God, your love is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.